And I remember that day being standing bold and standing tall and saying, all right, God, whatever you want to send my way, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it now. I'm ready to fight and I'm ready to show you that I'm going to preach your word no matter what comes my way. Eli, two weeks later, my baby girl started getting pain in her belly. And her mom was even telling me, you know, playing around because we had a good, you know, relationship. She said, what are you feeding her? Are you taking her to McDonald's? You're giving her, you know, <clears throat> and I said, no, you know, she loves eating her sopita. That my mom makes she loves eating home food. And it just got to the point where the pain was more and more and every day. And literally two weeks after I had that conversation with Pastor Tanya, we ended up taking Mia to the hospital and we had taken her to her pediatrician. Her pediatrician said, oh, she's just constipated gave her a medicine called Miralax to kind of help soften the stool. Um, and no, nope, nothing was working. We ended up uh, at the hospital. Um, it was in uh, September 7th of 2017. And the doctor comes in. He says, no, she's constipated. I touched her belly. I'm sorry. Oh. And <clears throat> we actually asked for a x-ray because just she's our daughter we know her and sure enough <clears throat> he did the x-ray and it was about an hour later that he said you know what we saw a little mass in her belly area it's kind of attached to the liver but we were at del sol um so they said we don't have things for children here so we're sending you to the children's hospital and i'm just, <clears throat> and we went and they said all right well tomorrow we're going to do further test testing they did. They did a full CT scan. They did MRIs. They did x-rays. And it was on September 8th of 2017 that the doctor walks in. And I still, I, I can still hear him talking to us because these are things that still keep me up at night. These are still things that still give me PTSD. And that is when he sat down and he said, Mom, Dad, that tumor, that little mass that they saw is not really a little mass. It's a tumor. And it's wrapped around her belly. And he paused for a second and he said, guys, Mia has cancer. Two years old. And our little girl was laying in her bed asleep. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I remember much after that. I know he was talking. And I know her, <clears throat> her mom was next to her and I was kind of holding her. And I walked out of the room. I walked out of the room and I picked up Mia's little sandal that was there that we took her in. And I started walking and I don't even remember walking. Like I remember like if I was floating or gliding through the hallway and I could see nurses and medical staff looking at me because obviously they knew the doctor had gone in and I could just hear someone say, Mr. Ojeda, are you OK? But to me, it sounded like they were inside a can, like they were far, far away. Like I was it was all like foggy, like misty. And then I remember walking to the side and there was a big window and I'm looking out of the corner of Alameda and, and Reynolds. And it was right there where it hit me that he was saying, Mia has cancer, Mia has cancer. But at the same time, I could hear what I say is the Holy Spirit. What I can hear is saying, remember, you said that no matter what, you were still going to be faithful and you were still going to preach. This is when you remember that conversation you had with uh, Pastor Tanya? With Pastor Tanya. That okay. is when I started hearing that conversation because it was then that I had promised God I was still going to continue to preach and, and be faithful. And that is when it started. That's when the fight started, September 8th of 2017. At two years old. At two years old. She had.